the week before the documentaries aired, um, we watched it for the first time. I thought we were all pretty proud of it, to be honest. We all liked it, and we all thought, "Oh, this is going to make a, this is going to be a hit." This is. The life we had together, these four boys, was just amazing. It was coming to a 10-year anniversary of when the band split up, and of course, record companies being what they are, they thought 10 years on, a repackaged greatest hits, more record sales. The label took us out. They took three of us out. We went to quite a nice restaurant and got a little bit of, you know, we got a little bit proud and a little bit, you know, like, we got a bit of attention, so we're all like, hey, this is good. And then it got to the end of the evening and I said, come on, let's split off from the, the label. We had a few drinks and we just started talking about stuff and saying, what if one drink led to another? And then Mark said, hey, by the way, lads, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> In this sort of slightly drunken voice. And we were like, what? And he went, my manager's received an offer today from a promoter. Surely we must be inside. Come on, guys, I can see it. And I hear Howard go, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> guys, he's like, oh. He says, I've been thinking the same thing, you know, maybe we could do it. As he's saying it, I'm thinking, oh, I'd love to do that. <laughs> So Mark said, let's get Jay on the phone. And Jason said, are you lot tanked up? The other three lads have been drinking already in the pub. They were quite slopped up. And we're like, no, 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 we had a drink, Jay, just on water. And I was sober as a judge. And I'm like, Jay, we need to tell you something, where are you? And I thought it was a bit of a blag at first. He says, well, I'm on the North Circular heading home. I was like, no, 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 get into town now. It just seemed obvious to me straight away that they were far too drunk to make sensible decisions. <laughs> Two hours later, Jay arrived. A few more drinks have been sunk in the meantime. I was the only one out of us four, us five, including Robbie, that had not been involved in the music industry in the last ten years. Even though he was probably the most reticent to wanting to get on stage, there was an intrigue. I could see it in his face. Because it had always been talked about before, about us touring again. But it was the first time we'd had like a solid offer. You know, I was more scared about the protection of the name Take That. We finished at our, well, the best time we possibly could. Go out on a number one. I was scared. You know what I mean? I think I was just about getting anonymous again. And we sat and chatted for about four hours, you know, around at Gary's. I think I left at six. And the sun was coming up, you know, and uh, and we said let's do it. And then I think the next day, the kind of the apprehension setting in is a bit like, oh, we're we making the right decision. In the back of my mind, I was hoping it was going to happen, but I just knew that the other boys would probably be more negative about the idea of it. We were always very proud of our shows in the past, and I think we were more, mainly standing around, sitting around, you know, saying, can we actually do this? You know, even if we thought, let's do it, is it? physically possible. Thanks, mate. Good evening, gentlemen. Can I interest anybody in a small concert? My issues about going on tour were to do with... I'm 35 years old. We were a boy band, you know, 15 years ago. Um, and I really believe we were brilliant 15 years ago. We had that sort of boyish cockiness, if you like, you know what I mean? Which I've lost since. <laughs> you alright, mate? Uh, I am alright, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm good, mate. You all right? Yeah! <laughs> Two or three minutes before the press conference, I was that close to turning to the other three lads and saying, lads, this is a joke. We can't really do this. Who were trying to kick? We can't go on tour again. Honestly, it was that close before the press conference. I was very scared, but I was more excited about it. I think it's one of those things you think might never happen. But the reason I didn't turn to the lads and say it in the end was because the alternative was getting in my car, driving back to Manchester, 
And I tried to picture that in my head driving back to Manchester, having said to the lads, I can't do it, and not announcing to the press that we're going to do it. And that didn't sit comfortable either in my head. That was worse than actually going for it, if you know what I mean. So at the time, it felt like I was choosing the best of two evils. That was my conundrum, that was my predicament. Put your own self in, your own self out. In, out, in, out, you shake it all about. You do the okie dokie and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Hey, 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 after making the announcement, we got ushered into a side room and I felt like I wanted to be sick. And that's when I knew it was real, because it was a real vomiting feeling. <laughs> Shit, we're going on tour. I'm really scared. I've actually got a stomachache. When the new year came, it was it then started to hit exactly what we were, we were about to do, um, and we'd organised a, a trip over to Vegas. We wanted to look at lighting technology. We wanted to look at um, big stage productions. The shows are always there. There's so much money spent on these shows and, and we, we didn't want to skinflint on anything. We wanted to spend a lot of money on this show. We watched a couple of shows while we were out there. Um, a couple of Circus de Soleil shows and, uh, and we also watched Celine Dion, which uh, Gary fell asleep in. <laughs> and Howard jumped up halfway through and went, I love you, Celine, and she went, I love you too. We started basically with the set list, decided on what songs we wanted to do and what songs, you know, we didn't think we could do anymore. We also watched a couple of our old shows to try and get us into the mindset of the kind of show that we did, which was quite funny watching them. We were a boy band then. How could we come back as mid-30-year-old guys and, and do what we did then? When we go back to the 95 show, the first three numbers were just totally full out. And I was thinking, you know, there's something needs to be a bit more mature about this. Stop, get down with it. How are we going to be able to swing that without looking ridiculous, you know what I mean? We were so frantic on stage with our dance movements and stuff. You know, all this stuff and, and all this pumping and grinding and stuff. We could do it the first time around because we were young boys. That's immediately going to be put across with this opening we're talking about. We couldn't do boy band stuff. We could have elements of what we did 10 years ago, but we had to make the show uh, maturer and more sophisticated somehow. When four males come to get, when males get together, they battle for the girl. So we could all come on like as four different like characters with horns or whatever and all with that. You know, initially we talked about doing it very small, keeping it very simple and not having any of the theatrics. And then, then one day we were like, oh, let's put everything in there, fireworks a lot, and then the next day it was like, oh, maybe we're going the wrong way and maybe we should just have a band and us. And it's two songs yeah, rather than I think, one. I think, I think we should do We've two. said goodbye. I think so. The taxi yeah, no cab is well. waiting. I think you're brilliant. Don't, don't you cry. There's one more kiss before I have to go, Jay. Hey, girl, I know. Situation shit, Mark. I'll be home soon. We've always been terrified of the press, we have. We live in a country where that build-up is enormous. They build up, build up, and then they just love to take the bottom card out and watch it all just crash to the ground. Us four, in 2006, on stage, singing our DP, that's it, that's all you need. 
if the show would have been crap, that it that would have happened. There's no question about it. It's just us and our audience. We could have come out and just yeah. sat on stools or not done so much. Maybe had a bit of a stage move. You know, no fire, no water. As in the past, we'd have gone. Okay, we've got this, but let's let's put a moon up there now and let's pull a curtain down. We always felt like we had to add something, like that and we don't. Um, but so I wanted us to appear that on stage as men in control, being relaxed being who we are, warts and all, remove us somewhat from, from the boy band thing where it's all just smiles and, and just crap. Just, 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 you know what I mean, humouring the audience or patronising the audience. Let's have a conversation with the audience. This is a section in the show, right, where we thought, after all that frivolity, we thought we might tame it down a bit and have a bit of a chit-chat with you, that's all right. But we thought we'd leave it unscripted. You know, we, we thought we'd see how we feel on the night and perhaps share a personal word with you. So having said that, what I'd like to say is, um, I'm having a nice time. I almost didn't come on tour because I was scared. Because of my issues. <laughs> anyway, I'm really glad I did. It looks like you're having a brilliant time. I'm having a good time. Keep having a good time. Enjoy the rest of the night. I think there's a percentage of nostalgia. There definitely is. There is for us. The you know, so there's going to be for people out there. Um, but the reality is, we're 10 years older, and we just thought, you know, let's not compete with those old shows, let's better them. When we sold out so quickly, so many tickets in so quick time, such a quick time, it's going to sound arrogant, but I, was, I weren't surprised. That was one of the best feelings that we'd sold all these shows out, but of course, at this point, you don't even have a show. So, you go, right, we need to find everybody. Mike Stevens, MD, saxophone, vocals, guitar. Chris Healy, and I'm tour manager. Simon Satchner, I am the lighting designer of the show. Lee Pomeroy, bass player. And I am Milton McDonald, I play guitar and sing a bit. My name's Laura, and I'm a dancer. Yeah, but I thought it was going to be a kind of small, you know, I had no idea what, and I don't think anyone did the, the extent of it. Being in rehearsals, practicing and, and doing it is completely different to doing it up on stage. As it got closer and closer to the dates, we were counting down the days, we were going, God, we've only got ten more days to go and I don't know, I don't have a clue what's happening, you know? I don't know what I'm meant to be doing here and I don't know what's meant to be happening there. So I think there was, there was that kind of anxiety around at the time. <laughs> One of the dilemmas we had in rehearsals was, for me anyway, it was what kind of tone we were going to have to the show. You know, the crowd is half of our show. Are they going to scream here? Are they going to make noise? Are they going to be sat down during this gig? What's going to... It was an unknown entity, it was. But we all suspected maybe it ain't going to be any different. If it's a bit of nostalgia and it brings back some memories, or even if you hadn't seen us before, but we just wanted it to be a great night out. Let's make them laugh, cry, sing, dance. Let's try and do the lot. <laughs> We all thought, should we do our own, um, everybody do a bit of their own kind of uh, stuff and what they've been doing over the years. But it, then it started to feel unnatural. You know, it was a take that show and it, it wouldn't have felt right then for me halfway through to go, oh, here's a couple of songs that I've done and, and Gary go, oh, here's a couple of songs that I've done. One, two, three, four.
on the last show, very much the thing was to create a spectacle. From my point of view as a, as a show producer, I felt as though that the band got lost in amongst this fantastic stuff that was going on, and it didn't highlight them as, as, as individuals. The penultimate tour that they did years ago in 94 was much stronger, um, and that was about them and the band creating a piece of entertainment, and everything else came in. So I wanted more time on stage where it was just the four of them. I just think that we all know ourselves a little bit more now than maybe we did back then. So we, we know the people that we are and we're able to portray that. And I think the, the confidence for, for getting back up on stage and being able to do that, because when I see Gary and Jay, and I remember them saying, I don't know if I can walk onto that stage anymore, and I see them every night up on stage, I think, God, I remember when you said, but you're doing a damn good job, you know? <laughs> I would say I was in an average shape. I think my body's always been in, in a decent shape anyway, but it's not from the outside that counts, it's from the inside. So if you have the lungs to actually, you know, do the breathing and to be able to sing and dance, it's okay dancing, but to be able to sing and dance at the same time, that's where it becomes a real challenge. Keep on walking, looking at her. When they first walked in, they were a little bit like nervous, but the first thing Jay did was spin on his head and glide in on upside down and I thought well this is gonna, not going to be any problem then they re learnt the, the the choreography um, again um, and reminded themselves of it and and we also took them through but when they finished that week they felt a lot more confident I, I suppose it's like learning how to ride a bike you can always ride one even if you haven't been on one for five years you can get back up there and do it but I think everybody was nervous as to whether they could but I think everybody has got up onto stage and 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 found you know that quality in themselves again. But yeah, I was excited by it because I knew we'd have to get fit. And probably the rehearsals was exciting, but it was tedious as well because I hate learning new dance routines. I think the balance on the show was great. You didn't know until sure, which was over the hour, that you had 22 dancers on the stadiums. when we were in Vegas and Howard said have you seen Moulin Rouge and I'd never seen that film and I watched it and he said just think only takes a minute girl Roxanne we knew we had to do it only takes a minute girl and it was it was a song that we didn't want to do because it seems very very poppy and very boy bandish so we just wanted to revamp it And we watched that bit off Moulin, and I just thought, OK, right, and I went straight into the studio, put a little beat down, and it seems to work, bizarrely. We either thought we'd think of something new for it, or we don't do it, and, you know, it's a greatest hits tour at the end of the day, so we've got to include those songs in there somehow. And so you can almost help yourself, Jay, when she's going back. I think it just dated. You know, the band wouldn't have wanted to play it. Take That wouldn't have wanted to have done the, the moves to it. We loosely discussed about it. Would it fit into a tango? And Gary went, yeah, I think it could. One, two, three. 
four set five six seven eight one We've been dead lucky. We've got a fantastic girl, Kika. She teaches tango, so you know what I mean? She's a real pro. And she's a lovely girl. She's been dead cooperative. She's been dead patient with us a lot because we were really, in rehearsals, we, you know, we were falling over our two left feet when it comes to a proper dance, you know what I mean? I was really surprised how quickly they learned everything. They were really good, really amazing. The first time I got on the halo, I looked around and I realized that there was just a thin wire and that's it. But I trust two, the boys. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, lift, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. studio in London um, before the tour started we were actually doing some writing together when we talked about doing the greatest bits one of the greatest bits for me was Apache the first time around which was on the June 93 tour and I kept saying to everyone listen at some point we need to get this Apache thing going because we need to make a backing track for it do something new with a bit of that old flavor of like you know mad dancing sorry just labeling Okay, mate, here we go. We all just sat around the screen, and and like you see it on the stage, t t t t t that's how it started. T the boys t t and then Howard's on the other end, goes, boom, boom, boom. And it was like every piece that's got, that went into the computer, like it happened on stage, and it just grew then from that. The boys must always be ambiguous about their sexuality. They threw in all these ideas, and it came out as the, uh, I'm, gonna make, uh, I'm the manager, and I'm going to make the boy band. I think Jay basically come up with this thing of imagine if it was like the making of a boy band. I said initially, let's, I was about we try and create this, do a mock up of a, a, or a recreation of a boy band. Being almost the guinea pigs being, being manufactured as all being in a factory in our suits like clothes. They must never become too close to one another. They must never become real friends. Just in case one of them breaks down and has to be discarded. You know, when we got together, we, there was all these rules laid down about girlfriends and, you know, you have to have makeup and, you know, you always have to be smile, you have to be nice to people you don't even know. OK, we have our boys. We have our... In a way, we, we, I think we kill the boy band thing in that one seven-minute hit. In that one section of the show, we remove ourselves from... We take the step from boy to manhood, in, in a sense. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, and two, three, four, better, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Music. You see, when we first wrote that, I was quite nervous because it, it was quite wordy. But we, I think we've cut it down to the real concise kind of elements now, the ten rules. I was like the Ten Commandments, you know, that was where, where the, uh, the thought came from. It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, a bit of fun. This is us, a little bit taking the mick out of ourselves, but also, okay. you know, recognising that we were part of this whole 
manufacturing, you know, of a boy band thing. A lot of it is, is true to our life and it's a very basic way of how we were put together, you know, and, and how, how, our, our, how we formed and became Take That. And over like two or three days then, this piece of music evolved into what you hear on stage now. And it's, it's, it, we, we're the most proud of pieces like that because they're completely, you know, they've been created by us from the beginning to the end. We all put little bits of our own lives in um, and maybe some of the words uh, are quite to truth but then some are just, you know, we all know Gary doesn't want to dance. Who said that? Or hasn't wanted and um, per perceived as not wanting to dance. Who did say that though? Okay, but a real boy band must be able to perform a dance routine which includes all the members of the band including any members that are reluctant to dance. I feel strong and powerful on the stage at that point. Cathartic almost. It was a big question that always came up when we were talking about doing the tour was whether we could do it without Robbie. From day one we all wanted Rob to turn up, to be honest with you. The problem is that when he was in the band, we were a band, it wasn't about an individual member at all. I think when we, we spoke to him, he was kind of at the minds that you, you're doing it anyway, you know. Um, why, why do you need me to come along? You know, you're doing the show yourself. He really didn't want to rain on our parade, as he put it. He, he felt it respectful enough to say, you know, you guys, all those people have come to see you. You know, they're not going to want to see me, which is not true. They would want to have seen him too. With the last tour we did, because it was so sudden Rob leaving, it felt like we almost ignored that he was ever there. And I think what we re really wanted to do with this tour was to acknowledge Rob. And I think we did that. I think it was when we were looking through the videos that we saw how he opened Cut It With Magic in the old days and we thought it'd be great if he could come and do something like that again. I never expected him to come on stage. Um, and wonder whether it's right on this tour for him to have come on stage. I don't know if it would have been. When you're in a band, it's not about any individual. It's about take that. Everybody's a lot more supportive of each other, um, on stage and off stage. Oh God, it's, it's so much more comfortable in the place we are now. When you become 30 and you, you go on from there, I think you become aware that there are other people in this world that you're living next to and they have thoughts and feelings and they go home at night after work and have a life. You've come a long way. You know, I've had two kids and Gary's got married and he's got two kids. So I think in life in general, I do, I am nicer to people. We're all gentlemen, we're all nice people and we give each other our space and we get on really, really well. That's just the way it has to be, you know, rather than hiding things. Uh, I think on stage as well, there's just been a lot more of a support group with each other. I'm so glad that 
I didn't ball out and I took the right decision. I think I say it every night on stage. I was shit in a brick. I'm disappointed at the end of the show. I love the beginning. I'm going to say to the, to the audience, I was scared. I had apprehensions. I'm so glad I faced my fears because I am enjoying it. You just got to get on with it. You know, there's times where you do feel pressured that there is a lot of people and and sometimes when you think it's going to give you energy, it has a reverse effect, it, it can it drains your energy. I love it when we've got a whole two hours ahead of us and it's, you know, that first song's first couple of lines of, of song, it's always just a little flutter there, but once they're done, I just have a ball for the next two hours. When you see each other on stage, if, you know, look over and you glance out and you just give them a nod and, and I think it's that always that feeling of can you believe this is actually happening it, it felt very surreal the whole tour because you, you're astounded by the amount of people and even though your adrenaline kicks in you find sometimes some of the shows where I've seen the crowd and you know stood back and thought Christ look at all these people it's actually taken my breath away. We, we had it for seven, eight years, this tour in life. And you get blase in the sort of seventh and eighth show, you're starting to repeat all the lines you're saying. You do, it just becomes a gig that you're doing. But this time I've enjoyed every single show. Every show's had something special for me. Really, really, it's been the best tour I've ever done this. I've really enjoyed it. After maybe the first couple of shows, we all kind of said, what happened to those last 10 years? It's, you know, everybody's fitting into place and is doing their thing. And it's like, you know, where did they go? It's like we never went away now. It's like we just had a little break and came back. See all them people, you kind of think, God, they're all here for us, and it's, you know, I'm 25% of this band, you know, and probably 50 of them people are for me. You know? And every night I'm enjoying it more and more, to the point where I don't want it to end, which is a bit sad, really. really quite sad it's come to an end. Back to Panto. <laughs>